prices for you. If you fish out of a tinny like us, no doubt you've got the tipsy tinny syndrome. Isn't it a pain? You can fix the problem, you know, by fitting a set of our dolphin aquilizers to your boat. They will make it as stable as a pontoon boat. Imagine being able to stand up to pull in that huge kenny or snapper. A set of dolphin aquilizers will give your alley boat the ultimate in safety and stability. Phone me now for more information on our dolphin aquilizers. 0800 200 248. You'll save thousands on these 1999 Nissan Pulsars at Capital Cars. With the added safety of dual airbags, ABS brakes and side intrusion bars, they'll sell fast. Price to start at 12490 So be quick. Target puts towing stabilities. Sounds frightening. Find out which one risks serious damage. Plus, Sue attracts unwanted attention. Get your hands off me! And some solutions for snorers. Target, Sunday at 7 on 3. For historic homestead and gardens at Woodlands in Gordonton. Enjoy the Overland Pavilion for your family, work, entertainment or for team building days. The tranquil country setting of Woodlands is the ideal year-round place for your wedding ceremony, reception and after dance. Why not get away from the busy city and have your business conference in the Woodlands Function Centre? Woodlands Historic Homestead Reserve and Function Centres, 15 minutes north of Hamilton and Gordonton. Looking for an investment with a return that has been significantly higher than that paid by most banks? Contact First Mortgage Trust, a local group investment fund with a mortgage-backed investment, quarterly income, and flexible terms. Mate, First Mortgage Trust. Vivid lighting and design, locally owned and operated, have superior quality lighting and very competitive prices. Bring in your plans and ideas for friendly advice and a quote. Vivid lighting and design, just down from the 11th Ave Camera Road intersection, Tauranga. More than pots for the largest range of terracotta and glazed pots in the Waikato. We offer a range of exotic plants and accessories to complement any garden. For friendly, helpful advice, more than pots. Greenwood Street in Hamilton, open seven days a week. promoting South Island tourism is getting hundreds of hits a day from around the world. The attraction is Lamb Cam. The star, a ewe called Pam, and her farm paddock near Timaru. Fiona Cumming has more. Meet Pam the Pet Lamb, one of the nation's 45 million sheep, destined not for the table but for stardom. <laughs> Her every movement's recorded by Pam Cam and can be viewed on the net. And she certainly loves the camera, any camera. To make it more memorable, website. And I thought, well, New Zealand has lots of sheep. And I thought, well, why not have a sheep um, starring on the internet? Pam Cam has so far drawn up to 12,000 hits since November last year. And at peak times, up to 300 a day. The image is updated every three minutes. The six-month-old ewe was abandoned by her mother, but Hamish's parents, who own the farm, came to the rescue and keep things running smoothly in front of the camera. She was a, a, a ewe lamb, because we're, um, we're keen to have a ewe lamb. We'd like to keep her for breeding purposes. And she was an ideal candidate. Pam even has her own email address and received okay. some interesting comments. I had one from a person, I think, in the States, who actually was interested in building her, paying to have a shelter built for her. Those logging on will now be able to watch the romance develop between Pam and Sam the Ram. Pam has yet to show any interest in Sam, but there's hope come spring there may be a tiny addition to this farmyard soap opera. Fiona coming one year. Ratings are sore. Well, it's time to look at the weather now. Duck shooting tomorrow. How's it looking, Cam? Good for the shoot. It's not quite so good for the ducks. It'll be murky in many areas tomorrow. That'll make the ducks easier targets. They should head for the west coast of the South Island. Well, overnight lows at the moment are about 5 to 10 degrees above average for this time of year. That's due to the mild northeasterly flow over us and most places stay warmer than average through the day. 19s for Hokitika, Greymouth and Westport, very pleasant. Kapiti was a hot town on 23 due to the fern effect of the northeasterly, but a light southerly kept Wellington cooler on 16. Some rain today for parts of Northland, but there's heavier falls on the way tonight. There is a rain warning in place. Well, warm, moist air continues to pour out of the tropics and down across the North Island, dragging lots of cloud with it. 
and there's a deepening low underneath this cloud to the north of us. Some rain or showers over much of the North Island today, but it was mostly fine in the east. Some drizzle for the east of the South Island, but it was fine again in the west. Well, that high out to the east of us is still holding everything up, so we're stuck with this northeasterly flow and all this rubbish flowing down from the north for at least another day or two. The low moves south during the day, dragging a rain band down over the North Island. So for the South Island, low cloud and drizzle yet again along the eastern coastline, also areas of fog and inland areas. They may be a little slow to clear. Mostly fine everywhere else, but high cloud thickens up during the day, and in the afternoon some light rain spreads onto northern districts and should reach Canterbury and Westland after dark. East to northeast winds for most places, but the Marlborough Sounds will get a strong southeasterly. Quite a lot of cloud over the North Island. Rain with that grey frontal band will spread south during the day. Some heavy falls are likely in the eastern places as far south as Gisborne. Behind the front, there's a change to showers with some heavy downpours in Northland and Auckland, and a strong gusty northeasterly will tend a little more northerly. So cloudy skies and light winds in the south tomorrow, some mist for Queenstown and drizzle for Timaru. High cloud increases in the west, we've got drizzly rain for the eastern towns with more extensive rain after dark in Kaikoura. Cloudy but dry in the morning from Nelson right up to Levin, but there'll be some rain in the afternoon. Warm highs between 18 and 21. Drizzle, then a brief period of rain for the Bay City. We've got a strong northeasterly there. Warm and muggy in Whanganui and Palms to the north. Well, the northeasterly will be quite strong right through here, up to 50 k's at times in Rotorua. Some heavy falls in Rotorua in the afternoon. Strong winds and some heavy falls around the middle of the day or early eat or early afternoon for the Bay of Plenty here. Rain then showers for Northland with heavy downpours in the afternoon. Overcast skies for Dunedin tomorrow with drizzle at times fresh northeasterly wind and highs of 15. Murky skies over Christchurch too with low cloud and persistent drizzle. That northeasterly will freshen up. It will be mostly cloudy in Wellington with a period of rain later in the afternoon or early evening. A fresh southeasterly and a mild 18. Grey skies and rain for Hamilton, then a change to showers after the front goes through. There may be some heavy downpours during the afternoon. Bristol northerly there. Similar day for Auckland, rain first up in a change to showers with some heavy falls. The strong gusty northeasterly goes northerly in the afternoon. So looking ahead to Sunday, mostly fine in the east of the North Island, showers everywhere else. We've got some rain over the South Island. And on Monday, it'll be fine in the east and south of the North Island. Uh, we've got some uh, rain over the South Island, but it'll gradually clear in the north. Well, lots of rain in the forecast tomorrow, but these events here are all under cover. So if you're looking for something to do, you can check out one of these. There's a garage sale for the children's ward at Waterloo Hospital, a Red Cross book fair at Mount Roskill, and a Plunkett fair at Cockle Bay. They're all for a good cause. Thank you, Karen. Well, tonight's bigger than Christmas Eve for some. As we said, it's duck shooting time. At first light tomorrow, hunters will be perched in their mai mai's, puckered up for duck calls. But Anna Olican reports the southern drought has forced many of their faint forced many out of their favourite spots. The secret weapon for a good bag on day one, getting your ducks lined up with the help of a duck mobile. Saved ourselves a lot of energy, you know, with cutting decoys out and that over the years. And that's great. Quite um, luxurious, really. Yeah, it's got Hillman Hunter recliner seats. But by having to drive further out this year, the droughts left some my mice high and dry. Um, a lot of Hunters Ponds, which they have shot for many years, are dry this year for the first time. So it is impacting significantly on the places people have available to hunt. So it's off the farm ponds and onto the lakes. And the lakes are down too. Normally I see about waist deep out here. But it's here the birds will be congregating, as well as large braided rivers and coastal lagoons. And fish and game expect the numbers to be slightly up on last year. And with low cloud and light winds predicted for Canterbury, opening day could be the best for hunters in 10 years. Some are opting for steel bullets this year, even though lead won't be phased out till 2003. But here's something you won't find in the shops. Daffy, the Roboduck. I was proud to know, he's the only remote control vehicle. <laughs> Do you think that'll give you the edge? Oh, I hope so. It's the only one with the reverse as well. <laughs> a forward move in getting the birds in his sights. Anna Olican, One News.
Well, I hope you're including the ducks for a great weekend. The end edition is here at just after half past ten. For a free information pack phone 0800 83 4000. The lady in laser ensures precise connection of teeth without any loss of time. Taking the work out of farm work. This robot cow milker is known as the astronaut. Yeah, well, something like this is uh, a bit of a sure when you uh, revolutionize it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But some farmers think the price may be out of this world. Half the moon, probably. But that doesn't mean farmers aren't buying. Those in the dairy industry have had an average pay increase of $100,000 in the past 12 months. It's a windfall not seen here in 20 years. Adding a new room to the house just to put the extra money in. And like many others, he's spending it here at the Mystery Creek Field Days. This year's theme is innovation, and inventors like Gerald Pemberton are keen to capitalise on that. Call Smitch, his device can turn on farmyard toys like irrigation pumps with a call from a standard cell phone. New Zealand is probably the forefront of adopting new technology, and there is a lot of interest in it. And while high tech looks healthy, the real barometer of farmyard finances is tractor sales. Well, this one's got them. Controls here, you can adjust the other angle you want, but our sales are certainly a lot higher than they have been for quite a number of years, right throughout New Zealand, really. So much so, some of these quarter million dollar machines have sold out, and there's a waiting list for more. And while farmers want to reinvent the wheel, others are happier reinventing the spade. Let's go, sir. Andrew Potter, One News. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's pretty flash. I mean, the air conditioned cabs and tractors, are, you don't need gummies anymore, do you? Stuff. Absolutely. Hello, folks. Here's a little wee peep at the Hamilton Field Days today. These pictures are just being cut, so I don't really know what we've got here, but there's a bit of water, and uh, there's a few more hayseeds, and of course, all the skyhawks are saying, don't forget about us. Frighten all the sheep in the cages, and uh, everybody had a great day. You can buy those little sticks, those little walkabout, uh, sort of cane things to walk with as well, apparently. Lots of those for sale down there. Now, I told you we're going to get a warmer air mass, and that's what's happened. Look at these temperatures. The exception, well, this is with the Nor'wester, of course, the exception is Timaru and Oamaru because the Nor'wester didn't quite break through to the coast there. Look at Cape Cover right up to 17 degrees. Wellington had a fresh northerly with areas of cloud. New Plymouth had a 14. Still a pool of coal there over the centre of the island with 9 degrees in Topo. But from there right through to the field days, the weather pretty darn good. But there is trouble at mill. If we look at the satellite imagery here, first of all, here's yesterday's low. There was a second centre about to spawn out of that and drift away.